Over the years here at CJ's, we've done a ton of videos on brake upgrades. Anything from big brake upgrades, the dual ball conversions, the disc brake conversions, and everything in between. Well, in today's Tech Talk, we're actually gonna take a look at the braking system of your Mustang and give you a more detailed explanation as to what every part does. All modern vehicles have a four-wheel hydraulic brake system. Today, we're gonna focus more on the disc brake system, but how does the brake system actually work? When you press the pedal, a rod goes into the master cylinder, displaces fluid through lines, which goes out to a caliper, which will apply pressure to a brake pad, to a rotor, which is gonna stop your vehicle. So what are the individual components and how do they operate? Let's start with the master cylinder. Now in front of me here, I have two master cylinders. I have an old school single bowl and a more modern dual bowl. Now we're gonna discuss the dual bowl first. We'll go back to the single bowl in a second. We're gonna give you a close up of the dual bowl and how it actually operates. Now this linkage here is connected to a piston inside, basically inside the master cylinder itself. This is connected to the pedal. Now through the cantilever effect, when you push the pedal, this will actually push in and it pushes a piston inside the master cylinder. Now inside the cylinder itself, remove the cap and the seal. You'll see we have two chambers inside here. So basically what happens is this is gonna hold fluid. And then once that pressure comes in here, you can see there's actually two tiny holes at the bottom. When the piston's pressed inside, air will come into these chambers, which are full of brake fluid, push it through that small hole and out to your brake lines. Basically, you've got a, one part of the master cylinder for your front brakes and one part for your rear brakes. Now, this is the benefit over a single. Now, if you have a single bowl master cylinder, you only have basically one hydraulic system in your car, where this basically gives you two separate systems, one for your front brakes, one for your back brakes. If you only have a single system, if there's a failure in the system, you're gonna lose all of your brakes. So if you do have a classic Mustang, check out our video on dual bowl conversions. It's something you wanna do for the safety sake of driving your Mustang. But again, once the fluid leaves here, it's gonna go through the brake lines. Now, once the fluid's gonna leave the master cylinder, it's gonna go through the brake lines out to the caliper itself. You're gonna have two different brake lines on your vehicle. You're gonna have your hard lines and you're gonna have your soft lines. Now, the hard lines are gonna connect right to the master cylinder or proportioning valve, we'll get to that later, and they're gonna go out to the actual brakes themselves. Once they get close to the brake area, then they connect to the soft line, which will connect to the caliper itself. Now you have the soft line in there because basically if there's movement in the suspension or the steering, you need something that actually can move, which the hard line will not do. Now the hard line will come in different diameters again for different braking systems, but the goal of the hard line is to get the fluid to the hose and then the caliper, and then the reason it's metal is to protect it. And basically if you had rubber hoses running on the bottom of your car, the rubber can actually expand as well, plus the metal lines will be a lot more consistent, a lot safer, and a lot more less prone to damage than a rubber line would be. Now, when it gets to the hoses, the rubber line's okay because it's up out of the way, but we all know an excellent upgrade for your car is a braided steel brake line here instead of the rubber hose, because again, they will be stronger and last longer. So once your brake fluid is pushed through the master cylinder, goes through the hard lines, then through the brake hose, the last stop is gonna be the caliper. And again, this is why you bleed the brakes at the caliper, because basically it's the end of the line for the fluid, and that's where you get the air out. Now, when the fluid reaches the caliper, basically what happens is the caliper creates pressure on both sides, and then these pistons inside actually move, which moves the brake pad, which will then create friction against the rotor and actually stops your car. Now, in the master cylinder, the rod inside the master cylinder basically moves a pretty good amount to start moving the fluid because it's moving to four locations. Once it reaches the caliper, these actually barely move. That's why when you put your calipers on, your brake pads are all but touching the rotors because these just move a small amount when the fluid's applied to stop your vehicle. So we now know when we put pressure on the pedal, it pushes the push rod into the master cylinder, which forces the fluid out through the lines and ending up at the calipers. Now, as you saw when I tried to push in that push rod, it is very difficult to do. Now, the angle of the brake pedal makes it easier, but even easier then would be power brakes. Now, power brakes are gonna add a vacuum booster that's gonna mount basically on the firewall and the master cylinder will now mount to the booster with the push rod still going through. What this is gonna do is basically use vacuum off the engine and make the brake pedal a lot easier to push. This check valve here is gonna connect to the intake manifold and create partial vacuum inside this booster on both sides of the diaphragm. Now, when you hit the brake pedal, the rod's gonna crack open a valve, which allows air to enter the booster on one side of the diaphragm, but it also seals off the vacuum. This will increase pressure on that side of the diaphragm and it'll help the push rod push in the master cylinder much, much easier. Now, as soon as you release the brake pedal, the valve seals off the outside air while removing the vacuum valve. This will restore basically vacuum to both sides of the diaphragm 
Now this connection here is a one-way check valve. This will only allow air to be sucked out of the booster. It won't let air in. So in the case of your engine shuts off and you lose vacuum, you'll still have enough left for a few stops before you lose it completely. Now, like I mentioned earlier, if you're running a single bowl master cylinder, your classic Mustang, upgrading to a dual bowl is an excellent idea because again, it gives you two different hydraulic systems, one for the front brakes and one for the rear brakes. Now on that subject too, the reason your front brakes are always larger than your rear brakes is because when you hit the brakes, all the weight is shifted to the front. If you had large rear brakes, they tend to lock up. Now a proportioning valve will actually help out with that. The proportioning valve will connect to the rear brakes and basically will limit how much pressure can be applied to the rear brakes. So performance driving or even a panic stop when you're really, really heavy on the brakes, it'll limit that rear brake pressure so they don't lock up on you. Whether you're looking for brake upgrades or replacing worn parts, we have everything you need here at tjponyparts.com.